Talk, the home of where the talking is good. Uh, it's your boys, Cody and Robert. Uh, that's such a good slogan, where the talking is good. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be very real with you guys. We sat down today, and we did not know yeah. what to talk about. Not that all the questions were not good. Were it's good just, questions. It's just that nothing really jumped jumped out at us that we're mm. like, man, we could really like go off on that today. Right. And so we just, nothing really stuck out to us. And so we almost just not recorded anything. We, we just were, started talking about our services. Yeah. So we kind of just started talking about our services. I'm not really sure where we're going to, but essentially what I'm telling you right now is we're about to plug you in. Yeah. We're going to edit. We're going to, we're going to, there's going to be a jump cut here in a second where we just jump into a conversation Robert and I started having about our services. And so at first it might seem a little bit like what's going on here, but there is a point. It gets to a place. I believe we did end up having a good talk. We started talking about going deeper in our relationship, yep, making with it God, real, making it real. And then somehow it talked about righteousness it was all really good <laughs> it's stuff. all in there and if nothing else i got blessed by it i yeah. had a good time talking about it so hopefully you get a good listen out of it so let us know what you think <laughs> if you didn't like it don't let us know yeah what don't you let think. us know just yeah. keep that to yourself and uh, come back for the next podcast yeah and then uh, you potty head <laughs> <laughs> and cut so you said last night got deep what got deep i don't know i just like i think that like how i got into it about maybe inadvertently i actually haven't listened to your shallows yet so i can't say that we are talking about the same thing i don't know if you've been listening to my stuff or not but no. i haven't so <laughs> no <Nope. laughs> no nope, not at all no, sorry. but like from what i understand is like even though maybe we're not directly talking about the exact same thing in the same vein the uh. the vein <laughs> the <laughs> the ultimate point that I'm trying to get across about the subject of real is that I want them to realize that they need to have a real relationship Amen. with God yeah. and that God wants to have a real relation. It's not just like this idea mm. or this thing that we do. Mm. Like with the woman with the account of the two mites, like, you know, that's what we started with week one. And mm -hmm. when they were there in the temple. Jesus noticed all these rich people just throwing in money. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that they were throwing in money because they were obeying God. They were doing it to be showy. They're like, mm -hmm. hey, everyone look at me. Mm -hmm. I'm throwing in my money. Yeah. And look how much I'm throwing in. I'm throwing in more than that guy mm -hmm. just trying to make a noise in that big shofar bucket thing that was there. And But the woman, when she went in, she dropped in the two mites because it was something that actually meant something mm. to her. She was like, I trust God. I believe God. This is my, per this is my life. Yeah. Like, I'm putting everything into this because I trust that God is going to help me. Yeah. And so Jesus took notice of that. Yeah. You know, he was like, this woman has a real passion for this. She understands the, the importance of putting her trust in God. Yeah. And so, and he, Jesus hadn't even died <laughs> for her yet. Mm. She was going off this old covenant. Like I trust God, you know, at this point. Yeah. And then like week two, you know, I talked about, you know, uh, without faith, uh, faith without works is dead. And I talked about like, if, if the life of faith, and I was talking about faith in the sense of like our belief in yeah, God. Absolutely. Yeah. Like yeah. The, the word faith that I it was more of like, if you believe this, if you yeah, truly yeah. live this and yeah. you say you live this, then we should have results of that. Right, that is the life of faith. Right, people yep. should notice something different <clears throat> about you. If you have a real relationship with somebody, people notice that you have, you know, you, yeah. you live your life in a way that shows that. And then last night I talked about like, and in order to keep that real that real relationship, to have that real relationship, then he must be the foundation. Mm. And I don't know, I think I just got really heavy because I just feel like it's just so important. And yeah. I was making it so very real and I was talking about how, um, the example was really funny last night because it didn't really quite pan out how I wanted it uh, to. It happens, uh, it happens. The, the cajon stood strong, obviously, but then the music stand, for us, it fell when we tested it. Yeah. You know, earlier, but then when Anna was putting on the, the blocks, it just kind of like sunk down and it just stayed there. Mm. And I was like, okay, well, that's fine. You know, obviously, like, you know, it can stand and it can hold. And then I like took my water bottle, I went to the, the cajon one. I was like, but when something comes against it, boom. And I was like, it still held up. It was fine. And I went to hers. And I was like, something comes against it, and boom, and then everything just fell over. And I was like, it's not going to hold. And yeah. I was like, this is like this, this foundation right here. Like, you know, you can base your, your life around a person. Mm. And that can be your foundation. I was like, but if that relationship ever goes, yeah, that's right. Your life crumbles. Yeah, it and goes I was with like, it. And I was like, that can be a myriad of things. I was like, that can be a relationship. That can be alcohol. That can be drugs. I was like, yeah. that can even be like, you know, and I said, I don't know why, but I was like, I could be cutting yourself for relief. Mm. I was like, anything. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know why I felt led to say that. Yeah. But maybe that's where it got deep. Maybe yeah. I hit something for somebody. Right I don't vein. know. Yeah. But uh, the vein. <laughs> the vein. Yeah. But you know, it was like, 
I was just trying to let them know that like these temporal things That's are right. not meant to be your right. foundation because right. they can never give you the realness that God can give mm. you. And so I don't know, it's just something that has been really strong on me with the series that I want them to see that God wants this real connection yeah. with them. And inadvertently, maybe in some ways, it's kind of a similar subject because if it's real, you're want to go, you're going to want to go deep. Right. You're going to want to do things that that seem. I don't know, to reflect that. Right. Like you'll, you'll actually want to go deeper in your worship. Right. You'll actually want to read the Word of God. You'll actually want to pray. You'll actually want to help people. you want to do the things yeah. that God has called you to do. I think that's a great topic to be studying, especially with teenagers, because I know a lot of them, uh, well, I won't say a lot of them, but some of them, I, I know I was in that position. We went to church because mom and dad were the pastors of yeah. the church. And so because of that, it was more like, this is what we do, as opposed to it was a real relationship yeah. I had with him. And so I think it's a good study. Going back to the woman with the two mites, when you were sharing that, the scripture that came to me was, you worship me with your lips, but your hearts are far from yeah. me. And that's essentially what those guys were doing. It was all for show. Mm-hmm. It was like, we're, we're, we're doing this because we want people to see us do this. We're doing this because this is what we do as Christians. Yeah. I feel like sometimes we get that way with church. Mm-hmm. It's just like, we're doing this, and we, we've called it, and we've done series called Going Through the Motions. Yeah. And you just get going through the motions, and you lose some of that investment of your heart being engaged in what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and it also goes back to that scripture we said that you know God is looking for those. There's a time mm-hmm. where true worshipers will worship him and spirit, or in spirit and in truth. And so it can't be something that's done in the flesh. You can't just be like, oh, look at me, look at me. There's got to be some authenticity and some genuineness behind it. Like for your series, it's got to be real. Like I'm really invested in this moment with you. And I think that's the thing with the woman with two mites. It was all she had. She was really invested. Right. This this has to be real. It has to be real. (laughs) Because this is all I got. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, and going back to scripture again, it says, worship the Lord with all of your heart. Mm-hmm. So, like, those guys were just scraping off the top. Right, yeah. So, like, to Doesn't them, mean anything. even though they were throwing in a lot of money, yeah. to them, it was like, I'm just going to throw in my dollar today. It's breadcrumbs. It's just whatever. Yeah, you they know, were giving Jesus extra, breadcrumbs. Which, you know, again, God can use the breadcrumbs. He can. And he's, he's going to use them, but he wants some skin in the game. Yeah, and I think that's, that's a good way of saying it. Her investment made theirs pale in contrast because there was no investment really being made by them. It was just show. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what separates real from, you know, authentic from unauthentic or genuine from not being genuine is what is your investment in this moment? Are you just here for show? Are you just here because you're being forced to be here? A lot of people, uh, I don't believe in our church, but a lot of people I've seen it growing up is they do it just to soothe their conscience. I'm here to punch my Christian Uh, time clock and my time card so that way I can feel better about myself. I I feel like when we are disingenuine that way, we don't get everything out of this relationship that we are supposed to get. So there's definitely needs to be some realness to what we're doing and some investment. I mean, because God, he's he's invested everything in us. Right. Like he's literally put all of his eggs in this one basket. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to restore a relationship through my son, Jesus Christ. He's invested, man. He's committed. And I think that investment... Uh, we, you were talking about this morning investments. The best thing about investment is when you get a return off of it. Yeah. Otherwise it's kind of a bad investment, right? You know, and God doesn't want a bad investment. He wants a return off the investment of Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that was made. And I think that's why Jesus took pause with that woman. He's like, I'm about to make this investment in my life. Yeah. But she's all, like you said, old covenant before he died, she's already invested in all that she is. Yeah. Look at how awesome that is. Right. He's thinking like, dang, this is the woman I'm about to die for. This is worth it. Yeah, you know? exactly. Exactly. And so he immediately in real time yeah. saw an investment off of or a return off right. an investment he hadn't even made yet. Right. And so I think that's why he was like, whoa, yeah. this is where it's at. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I think that kind of touches the heart of God when we do the same. Yeah. And that's where we have these experiences. That's what, you know, uh, uh, I don't remember where I first heard it, but I heard the phrase to know him is to experience him. Mm-hmm. And the way we experience him is like the woman with the two mites. She invested everything. And when she invested everything, Jesus took a moment and made everything about, like, okay, I'm going to get yeah. you what you need. Let's talk right. about this. Yeah. And let's minister to her. Right. And that's what I was, I brought out is that, like, when you obey God, like, truly, like, Jesus takes notice of you. Mm-hmm. He, he notices mm-hmm. those that obey him. He notices yeah. those that, that are truly for him and yeah. with him. And that's when... That's when the the real stuff happens. That's yeah. when the good stuff happens. You know, like you you get look up to the scripture. 
you get to have that that overflowing of the blessing and the, and and him like actually going through life with you because like you're you're pleasing him you're doing what he's asked you to do he's helping you he he wants to he wants to be a part of your life yeah but if you don't want to be a part of his life or you're not doing anything to to at least show interest in that then what well, he's not going to really do anything you know exactly. like, like he, he's a gentleman we've said it many times he's right. not going to force himself upon you right because that that's that's assault <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> and I'm, you know what i'm that's brother. assault that, that that's not that's not a real relationship <laughs> he he wants there to be a desire yeah there's a, a scripture in second chronicles 16:9 it says for the eyes of the lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Mm. And uh, in this, you have done foolishly, therefore you are now uh, have wars. Okay, so that took a turn, but... (laughs) uh, (laughs) That got weird. (laughs) It got weird, but basically, you know, he's saying if your heart's not invested in me, things are going to go sideways. But it's just amazing how he's, he's looking for somebody. Yeah. He, and that's why Jesus stopped with the woman. Too. He's literally looking for somebody who's ready to invest in this relationship. That yeah. scripture in Chronicles, his eyes are roaming the earth to and fro, and he's just looking for yeah. somebody, anybody, that is saying, you know what? I'm ready for you, God. I'm yeah. ready to be engaged in this relationship. I am here with you. Yeah. I, I'm not going to do this for show. He's not going to be lip service. Right. I'm going to invest. Right. And there's many ways to invest, and, and one way is with our worship and, yep. and lifted hands and, uh, I mean, just giving all that we are right. back to him. And when we do that, some really cool things happen as right. we experience God. Well, because that's what it says even in that, that account of Luke where he's talking about with the foundation. It's like you're not when you're not just hearing the word, you're not just around the word, and you're actually doing yeah. the word, that's when you start to build your life upon God. Yeah. And that's when— that's that's right. When calamity happens, when storms happen, or just when life is happening, mm-hmm. you're able to stand against it. Yeah. He's able to 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 show you how to navigate your school life or show you how to navigate your career, or even show you how to talk to people and how to help people, how to bless people, or how to worship. Like he teaches you like how to That's worship, right. how he to will. pray. Like, yeah. like the, when you live on God, it's when you're able to like live with God. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's 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 so good. And it to me it's it, it's so simple, but yet so important. Yeah. So if you had to define it in a moment and you had to give like in its simplest context, and I know you're unprepared, oh gosh. <laughs> you're unprepared for this, but if somebody asked you that, that, that question, what does a real relationship with him look like? Mm. What is the answer there? How could you give somebody an answer to simply define for them in a moment, in a moment. where it's not like X plus Y equals Z, but just a simple definitive answer, this is what a real relationship, because if somebody comes to you and is like, hey, I want to do this, how do I do it? Mm. You know, what does this look like? What am I supposed to be doing to be in this real relationship with him? What does that look like? If you had to give an answer to somebody, young or old, what would that answer be? (laughs) At least try. (laughs) No, I mean, I think just a genuine desire to want a relationship is a great start. Mm. To, To want to have to make it work. I mean, even in like a relationship with like my spouse, like if if me just wanting to make the relationship work and making it a priority, I think that is a beautiful start Mm. to, to care about her needs and her wants and her desires and to, to make a relationship happen. I think that's a great way to start. So even with God going in, knowing like, Hey, I might not have it all correct. I might not do it all right, but I want to try. Yeah. I, I want to at least get out there and try. You know, when it comes to prayer, I'm at least gonna try to pray. Yeah. I'm at least gonna start praying. And, yeah. and even if I don't feel anything, at least yeah. just try. I'm gonna read my Bible. Even if I don't re- hear anything from God when I read it initially, I'm at least gonna try. Yeah. If I when I come to worship, if I raise my hands or if I at least just try to connect with the song and try, you know what I'm saying? Like I think that there's a, 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 a there's a desire that yeah. needs to be implemented and i think that's what desire yeah striving right trying yeah so if they have the desire the next step for implementation would be could do it <laughs> <laughs> okay i don't know i mean i guess I, I i don't know how to answer that question yeah because it's i think it can look different for every person mm. as to like what that looks like yeah you know and we even asked me like we were like looking through some of these questions like what's your perfect study session look like for me I sit on my couch and read my Bible, or whether it's on my phone or an actual Bible or what. You, it might be sitting at a desk. You, yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. Like it, it could be different for every person. Right. But I think that the 
the mode of transportation is not what it what gets you there. I mean, it does, but the fact is that you want it to get there yeah. in the first place. You yeah. know, I think in my mind, I'm thinking of this meme. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's like this really weird, like stick figure guy and he's holding a stick. And like, if there's something down here, it's like usually used for like football or politics or like when nothing's happening in this, like stick figure guys holding <laughs> a something. stick and says, do something. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, have you seen that meme? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So that, I think that's what I'm thinking. If somebody has like this desire to have this real relationship with Jesus, yeah. I feel like, okay, now do something. I guess maybe that's what, in my mind, it's like if you really have the desire, if it's a real desire, then you'll do something. You'll do something. You will do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, it should already get to that, like if it's a true feeling and a true want, like you will act on it. Yeah, yes. Like if you actually genuinely want it, you'll go for it. Yeah. Like like if I'm hungry and I and I, and I want food, I'm not just going to sit there and think about how I'm hungry and I right, want food. I'm right. going to go get gonna me. Get I'm going to get up. Yep. I'm either going to go to my kitchen and make me something or I'm going to go drive to the store and get something. I'm, yep. I'm going to go do something about it. Yeah. So if I want a relationship with God and I truly desire it, I'm going to pursue it yeah. and at least try. Yeah. I think that that's a really good answer and that's what I would, would tell somebody. I want to read this definition. Um, let me look it up real quick. So cue the music. Uh, bomb. <laughs> So, like, the <laughs> definition of seek mm. is attempt to find something, attempt or desire to obtain or to achieve. Yeah. And so, I think, you know, we we can't stop purely at just, if you want to have this real relationship with him, the want is good. And I think that's even where we start. Mm-hmm. We should ask him, give me this desire. Yeah. Make me hungry for you. Especially if somebody's been doing this for a long time. Yeah. I believe that's a really good prayer. Rekindle some things mm-hmm. on the inside of me. Make me return to my first love when I first got born again. And this was exciting because Jesus was new and changing everything. I think sometimes we become like an open bag of chips. We get kind of stale the longer. <laughs> open bag of chips. Right? If you leave it on the counter and it's open for yeah. like a week. I mean, they get like hard and crusty and stale and lose their flavor. And even me as somebody who's been doing this for 20 years as a pastor, if I don't ask for that freshness Mm. and that newness, revitalize that on the inside of me, my life for him becomes very stale Mm. and what I'm doing becomes very stale. And so there's a continual renewal process. And that's why in Ephesians, it talks about state B and B filled. You know, you got, this is a renewal process and keep doing it, keep going, put in, put out, put in, put out. And the only way we put in is through fellowship with him, happy happens in the church yeah. setting, happens in a private setting, but put something in. So it starts with asking, okay, give me this desire. Yeah. I want more of you. But then what do we do after we ask? What do we do after the desire? I think in the simplest answer, if somebody was like, Robert, I want a real relationship with him. I, I want it. What mm-hmm. do I do now? I think that's the simplest answer I would give them. Start seeking. Yeah. Every way you can. Right. Read your Bible at home. Talk to friends about it. Go yeah. to church. But then there's more to it, right? Yeah. Because when you're seeking, just getting in the building is not enough. Right. Yeah. right? Imagine if somebody was hiding in this building. I can't just sit here and be like, I'm gonna find you. Yeah. I'm gonna, you know, I gotta, like you said, there's gotta be faith with action, yeah. faith with works. Right. Faith without action is dead. Yeah. Faith without works is dead. So if I believe I want more of him. I got to put some action to that faith. I'm going to get up from this chair. I'm going to go and find them, kind of like you, the analogy with the food. If I want food, I'm getting up off my couch and going, if I want more of God, there's going to be a demonstration Mm. of that desire lived outwardly for others to see. I'm going to seek. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's many ways to seek, especially in a corporate setting. Let's Mm. push into the presence. Let's not, let's not just spectate. Let's not just watch. Let's push in. Yeah. And let's disappear in the moment with God. Yeah. I know? think uh, in in week two of when I was talking about this, uh, it, I'm assuming this is a podcast. I don't know how we're going to make it work because this is, this is some good conversation that's happening. So maybe just we'll, more casual today. But yeah. We'll, we'll record an intro and <laughs> put it at the beginning and we'll just let you know <laughs> oh, okay. what's happening. Maybe, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But in week two of this, uh, I had like... Uh, I guess a vase. I kept calling it a vase because it just sounded fancy. A vase, a vase a of vase. chocolate milk. And I had all these sponges next to it. And I was like, all of these sponges are is like us in church. And this, this chocolate milk is God and all of his goodness. And a lot of times, if we're not careful, you know, we can come be around the chocolate. We can come around and be mm-hmm. the goodness of God. And, and we're just there. Yeah. You know, we come yeah. to church and we're around it. And yeah. we, but we leave. Yeah. And we never actually absorb what was happening. There. Right. We never actually took it to heart. Right. And I think that's what God wants us to do is we take ourselves, we take that sponge and we dip into that chocolate milk and we absorb it. And when we come out, we're a sponge that's full of chocolate milk. 
Yeah. And then when we encounter people, they get to experience the chocolate milk that right. we've experienced. And so I told him, I was like, that's as simple as saying, okay, what did that dude talk about tonight? Let me go home mm. and read some of those scriptures. Yeah. Let me, let me, yeah. let me just see what else, let me do some more of my own, you know, thoughts about this and talk to God about it. That That's part of the absorption process. Yeah, yeah. It's not just simply being yeah. around the thing, not just simply hearing mm. the word and him, him hearing the things of God, but actually getting and being like, what's this about? Yeah. You know, what, what's, what's contextually happening in yeah. the word right now? Or, or how does this actually apply to me? Does it apply to me? Right. You know, like maybe, maybe it was just a, a, something that was like, okay, that, that was really cool, but that doesn't really apply to me right now, but let me hold on to that for yeah. now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, let's, let's dig <clears throat> in and see what this word means or, or hey, in worship tonight, I'm not just going to be around the band and this mm-hmm. cool music right now. Let me press in. Yeah. Let me let me soak up. Yeah. you know the presence of God. Let Him mm-hmm. minister to me right now. Like those are ways to really take in and not just be around the things. Of God. And what's cool about that as you're ministering that it's just kind of jumping up on the inside of me when that that is definitive of a real relationship with him yeah when you dip that sponge into the chocolate muke uh, milk muke muke, muke, muke. <laughs> muke when you muke it uh but this is really cool they become infused with each yeah, other yeah that sponge is like <laughs> there's no separation yeah. there's and that's how we're that's to me so definitive of a real relationship with him god is infused in every area of my life yeah. it, it it consumes that sponge mm-hmm. right and it lefts nothing it it it's absorbs the whole thing and that's the way we're supposed to be. I'm just not here with Jesus at church, mm-hmm. but even at school, even in my career. It goes with it's, you. It's part of who I am. Yeah. These two are connected, and, and, and just like that chocolate milk, yeah, <laughs> milk. <laughs> it weaves its way into all the particles of the sponge. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what color the sponges were, but the chocolate milk even kind of changes oh, yeah. the appearance of the sponge. It was definitely like a cloudy pink afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> and so it, it, that's, uh, you can't, we cannot separate our life from without God and our life with God. Right. It's the two of them become infused. Yeah. And as I engage in this relationship with him, it's like, okay, just here I am. It's like Hebrews 12. I'm a living sacrifice. Yeah. I presented myself to him. Galatians 2.20, I no longer live, yet Christ lives in me. It's an effusion of this relationship with him to where yeah. when you look at Cody's life, you see Cody and Jesus. You yeah. don't see Cody, and then sometimes you see Cody and Jesus. You, right. But you see Cody and Je- all the time yeah. together. And it's a complete infusion mm-hmm of my faith, my supernatural, and my natural, right. and they come together, and now I can't separate right. the two. Exactly, and I think that that's how, when I related to them, I was like, what's one way that like I connect with the Word? You know, yeah. And I told them, if I take it even to just the simplest thing of like John 3, 16, of mm-hmm. how he came into the world, not to judge it, not to condemn it, but to rescue it, and I think about that for myself, mm-hmm. and, I, and I think about that Word, and I'm like, Jesus came into this world to die for me, Yeah, you know? To, to rescue me, to help me, not not to not not because of of me and he was saying like you're just this bad person and right. you know I, I hate you so much. He's saying no, I want to help you, I want to protect you, I yeah. want I want to save you. Yeah. And then when I take that and I look at what he did for me, it helps me have compassion for other people. Mm. Yeah. So it's like I'm taking that milk and I'm soaking it in for what he did for me, and it's like yo, I need to. I need to show people what this milk is right, like. Right, they need right. to see this milk. And so that that's how that connection for me is like, I start rubbing off on God and I see how good he is for me. And it's like, I need to show, uh, other people need to see this. Yeah. And whether it's me directly going out and being like, Jesus needs to save your life. No, but it could be just as simple as like, I need to show compassion yeah. to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to be patient with people. Today. I need to yeah. be gentle with people. Yeah. Today. I need to help people today. I need to love them, whatever the case may be. I think that like what you're saying is that there's an evidence that happens. Yeah that people are able to notice That's is right. that God is with that person. Right. Or there's something, they might not know it's God, but there's something different right. about that person. Right. I want to know what it is. Right. Like the Bible says, there's fruit that yeah. goes with my repentance. Exactly. This infusion of my life with his life produces results. Mm-hmm. And those results begin to be demonstrated. Yep. Just like you're saying, you know, it, it may not jump up on the desk at school and start rambling, you know, <laughs> turn or burn, Turner. you know, but it's just the way you treat people. Yeah. It's the way you talk. Mm-hmm. It's the way you conduct yourself. This infusion of my life with his life, yeah. this internal happening of, of a regenerated spirit, a new creation in Christ Jesus now begins to show outwardly in the way I talk to people, mm-hmm. the way I treat people, the way I conduct myself privately and publicly when the teacher says something to me, how I behave in right. that moment, when mom and dad are talking to me, how I behave in that moment, when I'm at work, I'm not taking shortcuts or cutting corners because there's an infusion mm-hmm. of my life with his life that's producing this outward excellence 
because he's made me excellent yeah. on the inside, you know? And uh, I think that, that they're, they're absolutely, when you have a real relationship with Jesus, there will be evidence of that. Yeah. And I think that's a good way to determine whether or not it is real. Is, is it producing fruit? Right. Is there evidence of this relationship? And if not, maybe we step back and we evaluate and we say, okay, I've been a little disingenuous right. here because I'm still doing my own thing. I'm still out here living, you know, the way I was before right. Christ, which means we really haven't engaged in this relationship with Christ. Yeah. And so there has to be a difference about you. Mm-hmm. And uh, there, so we, we have the ways to make it real, but then there's also ways that should prove the realness of right. that relationship with yeah. Jesus. And I think that there's something to be said too, is that like, with the at least try, you know, mm-hmm. I think that like that, that's something that we need to give more credit to. I think that there's a lot of people that like, they, they struggle with themselves as saying like, I, I just can't get it right. I'm still mm-hmm. messing up. I'm still having a hard time, but it's like, as long as you're trying, yeah. you know, God sees that and he honors that. Like, I think if you, if you are at least intentional yeah. and you're striving, you know, to have this life that, that is full of chocolate milk. <laughs> yeah. I use chocolate milk because I was like, man, chocolate milk's so good. Everyone yeah. likes chocolate milk. You know, so it's just like if at least you're intentional with your relationship with God, like God is working with you. And yeah. he, he's not going to be upset that it's taken you, you know, weeks to get over this right. issue in your life. Right. Or he's not going to be upset with you that, that it's taken you a long time to get lust out of your heart or whatever, as long as you're at least desiring to change. Taking those steps. Right. You know, you're, you're, you, you might slip up. Yeah, and and that's okay. Right. God is still there, and that was one thing I mentioned last night is that even if your house falls, mm. your foundation is righteousness. Yeah, the fa- that foundation will never change. Right. Once you belong to Christ, once you once you at least say I I'm in this. Right. Once I'm with you, He's with you. Yeah. You know. And so even if for whatever reason your house starts to crumble all around you, if you fall into the righteousness, yeah. you're going to be all right. right. God can rebuild you once again and yeah. get you back to where you're supposed to be. Right. It's uh, because in him we are the righteousness, Yeah. you know, and that's who we become. Yeah. It's not a word that describes who we are. It's a word that we actually, that's who we are. Yeah. You know, it's you're, not. That's the new creation. Yeah, that's <laughs> you the new are cre- righteous created creation. created in righteousness. I, I love that scripture that says that you are created in righteousness and holiness, you know, and so that's that's who you that's who you become yeah. and you know there's some imperfections along the way and we just work on those things yeah. uh, as you were speaking that I, I got this analogy I know we have some football players here in the youth ministry but I'm thinking of like of the relationship between a wide receiver and a quarterback if a wide receiver goes out and runs a route and the quarterback throws him the ball and he drops it mm. That doesn't mean that the quarterback from that moment on is like, okay, I'm never throwing to you again. I will never. Th- <laughs> You're <That's>, done, man. <laughs> that's so unprofessional, and that's yeah. not how that relationship right. works. You know what I mean? They're going to come back to the huddle, and the quarterback's going to be like, you know what? You got the next one. Yeah. And that's the way God is with us. Yeah. You know, He doesn't put us on the sidelines. He doesn't that's bench so us. That's so good. That he is just really comes good. back. And he's like, all right, I'm going to throw it to you again. Now yeah. you got this one. You know what I right. mean? Right. And I think though the problem is is sometimes people think it in like a man perspective. Is yeah. They think, well, I, I dropped the ball. He's not going to throw it to me again. Right. So then they don't try. The next time right. because they think right in a human relationship a conditional relationship yeah. level is that well they, he wouldn't trust me with the ball again. right but god does trust right. you with the ball. he does he called you yeah and the call never stopped the yeah call never ended he's right. still throwing it out he's there he's still doing it he's yeah. waiting for you out there he's, he's throwing <laughs> balls to <laughs> he's you on he's on the field out man. There. <laughs> he's ready to play and we have to look at it that way it, it is far, because in that the wide receiver, if he drops the pass, you know, we have football players that play for Bob Jones and play for James Clemens, you know, a couple of them are wide receivers. If they drop the pass, you know, in, in like this Friday, they drop the pass, they're not like, okay, I'm never playing football again. Mm. Gosh, that'd be awful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't put that All standard. All that hard work. Yeah, you can't put that standard on yourself. You need to have a renewed mind to yeah. be like, you know what, I, I, I dropped it. But I'm still good at this, yeah. <laughs> because a receiver steps onto the field, right? Any football, I, I'm out here because I'm good at it. And honestly, know? that's to me. And I'm not a person that's in, it's super sporty by any means. But that's what makes a good player, yeah. In my opinion, is someone that's not willing to quit just because they messed up, right? They're gonna work on it. They're gonna work on it, or yeah. figure out how to make it work next time, or whatever. Yeah. They're, they're gonna figure out a way to not drop the ball or to make it more accessible. Next and let's time. have that mentality. When a football player steps on the field, they step out there because they believe they're good. Yeah. Like, have that mentality when it comes to your life. Yeah. <laughs> like, you are his workmanship. Yeah. You are his mat. Start here. I'm give good. yourself some credit. Yeah. Give your, <laughs> start thinking that way. I'm good. Because if you always think you're bad and you're a mess up, that's going to 
produce bad and mess ups. Yeah. So look at yourself the way he looks at you, mm-hmm. a new creation in Christ Jesus that was made and shaped and molded by the hands of God. You are good yeah. as the Bible describes us. So just think that, you know, I'm good. I'm yeah. good at this. I'm good at being a Christian. I'm good at demonstrating my love towards God. I'm good uh, at this thing called Christianity. And then that thought process mm. will begin to produce righteous behavior yeah. and right standing. And so uh, just it's a simple shift in our mentality. Just have that mentality. Don't give up. Go for it. You can do this. I don't know how we got here, man, but this, I don't is, know, a, man. this is a good talk. At least it's if nothing else, talk. it was a good talk between I'm me and vibing, you. I'm bro. That yeah, fun. we're chilling. <laughs> so uh, we'll say this. I don't know how we got here. Um, hopefully this becomes a podcast. We'll see. We'll uh, see. We'll, we'll have we'll, to look at when it. When we get back to the editing table... <laughs> Yeah, we'll make the decision. Post. So if you're hearing this right now, we said it was good, <laughs> good enough. <laughs> so we appreciate you for being here. Hopefully, you got something by listening to whatever guess, just happened. Whatever just happened. <laughs> this was just an organic conversation between yeah. us. We sat down not knowing what to talk about today, yeah. and somehow we got here. Yeah. And so I believe it wasn't by mistake. But we'll see when we get to the editing table. <laughs> and I'm going to incorporate it into what we talked about. Okay. There's times where you're at church and you're just not vibing. You yeah. got to push through. Yeah, and dude. you just got to be like, you know what? We're we're gonna we're gonna work through this. We're pushing through. There's been so many times I've been at church and just not feeling, not in my feels. But yet I knew I needed to push through yeah. and just like, all right, I'm here. I'm going to worship. Mm. I'm going to make this about him and yeah. not about the way I feel <laughs> and not about my lack of desire for yeah. being here. Uh, it's about Jesus. And and we just we kind of did that this morning. We weren't vibing with anything, not in our fields, not, nothing was jumping out. But we, we decided we're going to push through anyways mm. for the good talk. For the good talk. Do it for the good talk. Do it for the good talk. We love you guys so much. (laughs) We'll see you on the next one. Bye.